Hello again, Aziz here, and in part 2 of our video tutorial on how to build a mobile landing page, I'm going to show you how you can create an in-depth, effective mobile landing page with stories and customized backgrounds. So let's get started. Now when we left off from our last video, we had just created a fairly simple landing page with a heading, a strap line, some bullet points, and a couple of CTAs. So first I'd like to add to our bullet points here. Now in each bullet point, I want to further convey value by presenting some examples or small stories. So that means some image on the left and a little text on the right. Now I've gone and created some code for some content ahead of time, so I'll just paste that in right here. Now as you can see, I've just pasted in a div class and labeled that as such just so I can keep everything organized. This class is going to be for car accident. Then within that, I've inserted an image and some text along with the CTA. If I just hit refresh, I can then see this. Now, this just looks a little bit messy. My image is a little bit too big and it's squishing in everything else. So to fix that, I'm going to create a rule for this image and others like it, instead of going into each image individually and sizing it as such. So up here in the style, I've actually already created a rule for these images which I'm going to paste in like so and then we'll hit refresh and take another look. Now it looks a little bit better. Now let's just take a look at our rule here real quick for accident type class. Uh, now this is just for the images and for each image the margin to the right is going to have 10 pixels it's going to float to the left it'll have a width of 110 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. This will apply to any image I put within these bullet points here. Now, since it's called car and motorcycle accidents, I also want the same kind of story but featured with the motorcycle. So I'm just going to go back down into my page here, and underneath the car accident label, I'm going to paste in the motorcycle accident. I'll hit refresh and take a look here. Now, real quick, I just want to take a look at this from other devices' sizes. So if I just bring that in, Actually, what I get then is a little bit of an offset here with my images. That's not what I want. So I'm going to have to change a few things. Now, if you remember from the very first part of the first video, I created a clear rule for any clear class. Now, that's where this is going to come in handy. Now, before the closing div of each accident type, I'm actually just going to paste in an empty clear div class. And I'll do the same thing down here for the motorcycle. And what that's going to do is that it's going to make sure that these images don't slide over one another like they did before. So I'll just hit refresh. And let's just check this out from multiple screens. And that lines us up pretty well. The only issue we have now is that it seems a little squeezed together. So I'm going to create one more rule for everything that's going to go within these bullet points. So up in my styles, I'm going to paste in another rule. And this is going to be for everything in accident type. So everything in this class is going to have a padding of 10 pixels and a border on the bottom to separate it from everything else. So if we just hit refresh, we'll pull that open and now we see everything's nice and organized, very easy to read. And if we look at this from other screen sizes, we get the same effect. Now with that done, I'll do the same thing from my other two bullet points here. And with a little movie magic, we'll refresh. And now our other two bullet points have content in them as well. Now with that, we might think to ourselves, what about some social proof, or urgency, or anything else? Luckily, there's a solution for that. But since we're talking about mobile devices here, we won't be able to fit everything onto one screen. So we'll have to get creative. So the first thing we'll want to do is that for more content, we can create another page. To do that, we'll just scroll to the bottom of this page, down under Main Page, which again is another great reason to make sure you label everything because with all this content it can get complicated. Next we can just roll up here into jQuery mobile page, click on that and it'll actually just insert a new page for us. But I don't want to do that because I already have a page set up and good to go. So I'm just going to paste that in and then we'll hit refresh. Now the only issue is how do we get to that other page? Now if we get out of live view, we can actually scroll down and see our second page, but we can't get there. What we're going to have to do is create a navigation. 
And what we can do is put another button next to this call now down here on the first page. So in the code, we'll just scroll down to the bottom of the first page down to this footer. And basically all I'm gonna do is replace this with sort of the same logic, but with just a little difference. Now there's gonna be a button on the left that's actually gonna bring me to the info page. And if you'll see here, the href brings me to info page the ID on the second page is called info page. So if we hit refresh and everything works fine, we're led then to our second page. This page then has our testimonials, any press releases, so you can put up any kind of social proof. It will increase the effectiveness of your mobile landing pages. Now, if you'll notice too, on the bottom I have back. So if we wanna go back to our main page, we can do such just by clicking that button. We can further customize our landing pages by changing the colors of our backgrounds or even including various other images for our backgrounds. We can also change the colors of our buttons. Now, one thing I'd like to do is actually make it so that this hyperlink here doesn't show up as just an underline, but as an entire button. The only thing is, I don't want to create an image with that. I want to use that just with CSS. So I'm going to create a rule here for any hyperlink that appears in the strap line ID. So I've already created my rule, so I'm just going to paste that in real and we'll hit refresh. Now that didn't turn out exactly like I wanted it to, and that's because down here in my call to action, I actually have a center tag around my call now. So I'm just going to quickly delete that, and if I want to adjust where my call to action lies in my landing page, I can just adjust my padding or margin here. So I'll just hit refresh. And now I have a nice little button for my call now. But that looks a little plain, especially compared to everything else in this landing page. So I kind of want to use a gradient. So what I'm going to do instead of using a solid color is go over to this CSS3 gradient generator. You can go ahead and adjust whichever colors you like here. You can also adjust however many colors you'd like there to be in your gradient. So I've gone ahead and selected my colors ahead of time. So I'm just going to hit copy code. It's been copied to my clipboard. So all I can do now is just take out background there and I'll just paste in all of that code. I'll hit refresh and now I have a nice little gradient button. Now there's still the issue of that underline. I really don't like that. Not to mention, I'm seeing that everything has this little white shadow and I'm really not digging that. So what I'm gonna do is in this little asterisk applies the rules to everything I'm gonna go ahead hit text shadow here and we're gonna to go to none now everything in this page isn't gonna have that annoying text shadow it's gonna make it a little bit easier to read additionally I don't want there to be an underline for this because it's already got an outline with this uh, button in the background so I'm gonna get rid of any underlines for any of my hyperlinks and uh, yeah make everything nice and neat now using the same principle of this gradient rule here, we can apply this to any element in our landing page. So instead of having these blue and black buttons, we could have other buttons like red, green, yellow, anything that we want to use to really make this pop out or make it seem a little bit more congruent with the opera page. Well everyone, that's it for our video tutorial series on how to create a mobile landing page with Dreamweaver. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below or email me at aziz at iapixel.com. Thank you once again and take care.